Alright guys, we're going to work through the football problem from the other day that's on the back of classwork um, 24, uh, sorry, September 24th on the back of that classwork um, problem two, uh, problem one, the running back problem. <clears throat> I'm not going to read it through because you hopefully have it in front of you. Your job while we go through this is to um, take basically identical notes to what I put on the board here. Um, I want to acknowledge that the that you all had a chance to think about this for a good half of the period the other day, which um, a lot of different like methods of getting to the solution came out. And I want to acknowledge that you all were able to do some problem solving around that without much context of of maybe a standard way of, of approaching these problems. What I'm going to show you today is is one method that that gets at solving these problems from the perspective of um, what we're going to refer to as the independence of motion, which I'll talk a little bit about here, but the method I'm showing you is one in which you could apply to many, many different two-dimensional problems. We'll get very, very good at these um, types of problems. Uh, but get, don't forget the fact that you were able to look at some of these and actually figure out using um, what you already knew about motion to figure um, what some solutions might be. So I just kind of want to make sure we acknowledge that before we dig into the real problem solving here. Um, just to give you the basic setup again, of course, read the problem first. We have a running back that, at some point in his running down the um, sideline, takes a 15-degree turn towards the end zone um, with a velocity initial of 2.7 meters per second. Um, we're trying to figure out a couple different things. One is um, how long he has to reach the end zone. The other one is if there's a person who is on the end zone yard line that starts to run at the same time, how fast would that person have to run in order to catch the running back? And so those are the two things we're going to get to. What I'm going to show you is basically a method that helps us organize the given information and the unknowns, the first two steps of the guess method, um, in a way that will make it much easier for you to work with the problem. What you'll see over here to the right is a, a T-chart with X and Y labeled on each side. The X and Y in that T-chart stand for the two different directions that are perpendicular to each other, X and Y. Um, if I were to place a coordinate system on top of my problem here, I could place X and Y position coordinates in a way in which you could see that the X direction is horizontal, Y direction is vertical. We're going to use that information um, as we solve this problem because one of the things that, tend, that it turns out to be true is that um, even though the motion for this object is at this diagonal, we can track its motion if we only look at it in the X direction and then the Y direction independently. And then we can connect those two through the use of the time variable, which is the same for both of them. Let me tell you a little bit more about what I mean here. Imagine you were a person who was watching this game from the sideline. If you were, say, sitting here, and you were looking this way, as this person ran diagonal this path, what you would see as their speed would only be the speed of that person traveling this way, because you can only see them from the sideline. And so you would see them just kind of moving off in that direction without knowing their full speed, because their full speed is diagonal to you. In the same vein, let's imagine you were in the end zone looking this way. If you were watching this person, their speed to you would appear to be only happening in the Y direction. And it's through that kind of thinking that we can break down um, these problems into very simple uh, solutions. So, here's how that works. In each direction, since this is constant velocity motion, there are only a couple variables. We can know about an object's position, initial, final, velocity and time in the x direction. I'm going to make this v not x. We can also do the same thing in the y direction, only we'll use the variable y. And if, if we can figure out all these pieces of information, we'll know quite a bit about the motion of this object. So, um, how do we get started? Well, let's figure out some of this information that's already present. If I count this point here where my person starts as the origin, then that means that their x naught would be 0 meters, as well as the y naught would be 0 meters. That's for this object. The final position would be up here at that point. Now let's think about this. 
In the x direction, that's only horizontally, I actually do know how far away that is. That's 25 meters away because he's this far over in x. So we're going to make that 25 meters. It's in the y direction that I don't know. I don't know how far down the field he runs in order to get into the end zone. So we're going to leave that one as an unknown. Um, v naught x, v naught y, we get from finding the components of v naught. And so we'll do that extremely fast here by finding the two components, labeling them as v naught y, v naught x, and then solving for them using trig. So I'm going to do that quickly. v naught x will equal the hypotenuse, 2.7 times, since this is uh, the adjacent side, this will be cosine, 15. If that step confused you, hit pause for a second and write out the trig function and see if you can figure out why it's equal to this. Um, in the same vein, v naught y is 2.7. This will be the sine of 15. And we can run both those. Our calculator here, making sure we're in degree mode. Um, we absolutely are. So, 2.7 times the sine of 15 gives us 0.7 rounded meters per second. So, in the y direction, that's how fast our runner is running. 2.7 times the cosine of 15 gives us 2.6 so meters per second. And so those can go up here. And because this is a constant velocity scenario, these do not change. And so there's no initial and final speed. And now if you look at what we've done here, we've allowed ourselves to figure out some variables. We're knowing that time will be the same on both sides. In other words, this person runs from here to here. And so the time it takes them to get there in the x direction and the time it takes them to get there in the y direction have to be the same. So these two variables are equal and y is a variable that we can find. And so what we're going to do now is figure out an equation that would work here. Since we're in constant velocity uh, land, um, that means we can only use this equation, our linear form. And so I'm going to use this on the x side, plug in some variables and solve. So this will be 25 equals 0 plus 2.6 times t. And if we work through that, t will come out to be 25 divided by 2.6, which is 9.6 seconds as the time. That gets filled in on our chart here to keep track of all the variables. It's the same on both sides. And if I wanted to, I could figure out how far up the problem the person went because I know this, these pieces of information. Um, and so that could be figured out from running that calculation. The second piece of this, uh, part B, says um, how fast does this running, uh, this defensive lineman have to run in order to meet with this person once they hit the end zone. And so if you think about this, in order to do that, our running back runs this direction, 2.7 meters per second, has this speed going up. If that's true, all this defensive lineman has to do is stay even with our running back as he runs. And so one thing we know for sure is he's going to run slower than the running back. The running back's running 2.7 meters per second because he has to run in the x direction and in the y direction at the same time. He only has to run in the y direction. So he's going to run slower, and he's going to have the exact same speed as v naught y because what he's doing is just tracking along with the running back as he goes up. So if he just stays the same, they will eventually meet up. If again, you watch my fingers. My right hand will move slower than my left hand if they are tracking together. And you can get a sense for that by watching um, the fingers move through that example. This is a setup that we'll use many, many times in two-dimensional problems. And this is the one I would like you to try as you attempt number two. Now, if you look at number two on your page, it says a particle moving with a constant speed of 10 meters per second on the negative y-axis crosses the origin and begins to accelerate in the positive x direction with a rate of 3 meters per second squared. So that means that when you draw your t-chart, in the x side, you're going to add two variables. You're going to add a final v, so v final x, and you're going to add an acceleration because there's an acceleration of 3 meters per second squared. If you do that and then pick the correct equation on the x side, you can easily solve um, for parts a and b on number 2. 
Um, please don't hesitate to call or text to ask questions or email, um, but that should set you up well um, for solving that problem correctly. Um, again, if you have questions about this process too, please do ask, and we'll see you tomorrow.